Someone just so fell down on the stairs. I am for the many times I've come back over the last five years. Receptions have always been just great. So congratulations for joining the revolution. <laughs>
Dixon Bank reminds me of one of the very early votes we had after Ronald Reagan was elected president in 1981. This came up, and there was a coalition of the Republicans and the conservative Democrats were working together, and they were cutting things. Most of the time, it was cutting the proposed increases, but anyway, it looked like things were getting cut, so I can remember uh, one congressman getting up. He's all right, you guys are cutting all this good good welfare, this, all the welfare benefits, what we need to do is cut some corporate welfare. So he proposed that we cut, you know, a, a large percentage of the Export-Import Bank, and it passed by over 100 votes. And I thought, wow, maybe, maybe we're on to something here. Maybe, maybe there will be a, a real difference uh, in, in the 80s, and, and, uh, and yet uh, there was a lot of talk afterwards, and they, people who, uh, who really were concerned about it got together, and they said, we can reverse this. We're going to reverse this vote. And the next day, they had it. A hundred people changed their votes and changed it and put the money back in. And I, I recall, it's so typical of what happens in Washington. The Washington Times, Washington Post had interviewed, it was interviewing one member. He said, well, you voted, uh, you know, to cut it yesterday. Today, you voted to put it back in. He says, does that mean your vote is up for sale? And the congressman, with a straight face, says, no, but it's up for rent. But that's that's about it. And that's that's why yeah, we need uh, people of principle that will stand. And that's why I was, of course, uh, very biased. I was glad to see my son win. <laughs> and I'd like to see uh, her bills win. Uh, so Whether 
it's diminished through what they put in the National Defense Appropriation Act, Authorization Act, whether it's the Patriot Act or whatever they're doing to do these good things for you. None of it can be financed without, uh, you know, the shenanigans through the uh, Federal Reserve System. So as government gets bigger, your liberties are diminished. And that is what government should be all about. Government should be very limited. And we should know it precisely what the government should be there for. And the founders knew this. And it, it is not to manage the entitlement system. It is not meant to police the world. It was there to protect our liberties against any encroachment. <laughs> four or five years with the uh, discovery of the uh, recession that had been predicted by a few people, but uh, <laughs> it was, it was a, uh, an eye-opener for a lot of people. Yeah, the debt is, is too bad, the recession is very bad, it's probably a lot worse than the government is admitting, the unemployment rate is much bit bigger than ever, but now people are starting to say there's something deeply flawed with the system, and if they're not on the take, the people are sick and tired of it. And I am delighted that there are so many, and especially the whole generation that are talking about this. And uh, for this reason, I remain an optimist on this, precariously so, because I have to go to Washington every once in a while. <laughs> I have to listen to that. But, uh, but governments reflect with the people. Um, it, might, it might surprise you, but most members of Congress aren't, don't have deep help Minnesota. No, they, they are, but their ideas are more or less to how do you stay in office? Well, it's up to us to say how do you stay in office as you do this, A, B, and C, and you obey the Constitution, and then they'll pay more attention. If not, then you replace them. <laughs>
change it is we need you active because you're in a, a minority. If you take the whole state right now, you're showing a minority, but you have a lot to say about it. You're influenced by ideas. And so that is the role. Everybody has a role to play, and nobody knows exactly what it'll be. It might be helping somebody to get elected to send it, and uh, running for elections and supporting other people, teaching or whatever, but there's always a role. But I think the most important thing is try to understand how the world works. I became, and I feel grateful that I became curious in the 50s and the 60s, how does this thing work? You know, and what is the plain truth of things? And for years and years, I tried to understand it. And I think that's the most important thing that we all, the information is available to us. In the 50s and the 60s, there was no internet. It was hard to find these books. There were hardly any professors. Today, there's a lot of professors teaching about what true liberty is and what the economic problems are. So the information is out there, and in some ways, you should be comfortable. I'm comfortable enough that you will pursue it, because I think the burden is greater on you who know what the problems are, and you you know know the answers, you study them, and you can honor it, and you won't have to worry exactly what you have to do, because somebody will make use of your talents. That is what I encourage, and to be grateful that we still have a country that we can still get together and have elections and work together. So this to me is still wonderful and we see a revival on something I think has made this country great. And if we pursue this, I think it will give us the greatest chance for peace and prosperity in America. Look at all those signs. Okay, guys, I'm cutting this out because I'm going behind the scenes. All of you know that the congressman will actually be around tomorrow, actually doing a very, very reasonable price fundraiser for your Republican Party tomorrow morning. $20. Okay, guys, I uh, save this. Uh, you can download it, and uh, I'll see if I can bring up a live stream later. I'm going to go uh, up to the war room and see what's going on. All right, bye.